I mean, come on. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Burning Hammer Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Izzo, and to your right, that's your other host, Dylan O'Brien. And today, we've got a good episode for you. We're going to kick off with the top five theme songs of all time, and then we're going to get into some WWE Night of Champions early match card predictions. So we're going to get right into things here with the top five theme songs of all time. To kick us off, we're going to hit you with some honorable mentions. And the first honorable mention is uh, John Cena. You know, yeah, you got... think... go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah. I was going to say, you got to give him the honorable mention here if he's not on the top five, in my opinion. Um, even though you might not think the song is very great, um, it's probably the most recognizable theme song of all time. Uh, if not, the Undertakers would probably be the only like one debatable up there with it. Yeah. Um, as where, when when I say recognizable, I mean as in the second it starts, you know exactly what it is, and um, and most wrestling fans would know John Cena's theme song. A lot of people who aren't wrestling fans would know John Cena's theme song. Um. And I will say, I want to give John Cena a shout out for this. John Cena, <clears throat> um, when he made his own, like, that was, he he did it at a time, not a lot of, like, people weren't, that was, like, very, that was a very fresh new thing for John Cena to go out there and make his own theme song. Yeah. I mean, like, this dude was literally winning WWE championship matches and then dropping 16 bars on your head, bro. Like, this, <laughs> like, literally. Like, I watched yeah. this dude win a WWE championship match and then run up, grab the mic, and just be like, in case you forgot I fell off, I'm still hot. Knock your shell off. And then he's yeah. just like, and then he's got the whole chain gang with him. He's like, it's going to be what it's going to be. Fine. <laughs> uh, just what a, uh, what a great, yeah, just recognizable. Uh, got to put it up there. Yeah. Um, another honorable mention that, and this is maybe an indication of how I'm going to come for these top five themes, but I'm going to give an honorable mention to uh, to Voices, Randy Orton's theme song. That was literally my other honorable mention as well. Nice. Was um, voices. I was actually, I gave two, I was, I had two more honorable mentions and they were both two Randy's themes. Um, voices and the one that's like, hey, nothing you can say, nothing you can change what you got today. I don't know all the words, but that one was good. Yeah, so actually, let's kick off because that was my number five. Is uh, "Burning My Light" by Randy Orton? Oh wow! Yeah, okay. um, I think it's better than a bit of a hot take, but I absolutely love this theme song, man. What a deep song. Yeah, dude. And this was the nebula rising above from the black of deceiving lies. So nostalgic for me, personally. Yeah. Gotta keep the part. Let's keep doing it, Randy. I'm gonna take what's mine. What a theme song, number five. Give it to me all day. I will die on that hill. That is the fifth best theme song of all time. Dylan, uh, what's your number five? Um, okay. 
Number five for me is the animal Batista. That was insane. Theme song that is actually my number four, um, which is just our transitions today are unmatched. So my number four is "I Walk Alone" by Batista. Man, I mean, wow, play Jesus it again, Christ. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so um, fuck, I that mean, was a good one. I mean, yeah, that's wow. What if that doesn't get you going? Nothing will. I mean. I will say this too. There's probably some recency bias in these songs. Like you're not going to find like I know at least for me, there's not a ton of like super old school um wrestling themes. And you know what? I'll take a shot. Um Do it. it's because they weren't that good back then. They they they, they very, yeah, they very much weren't good for a very um, long time. Um they were like all like a few. Like obviously Shawn Michaels can't yeah, shit on yeah. Shawn Michaels. But like, there's just like Shawn Michaels, honestly, an honorable mention. He easily could have been on the top five as well. Yeah, yeah, you could have put. Him ah, ah, ah. I'm you just a sexy I'm boy. I know I'm sexy. <laughs> Got the looks <laughs> that drive the girls wild. <laughs> yeah, so there's these are. I feel like they're all a part of the same era. Like these because like it was just truly a golden age for theme songs bro uh, for real <laughs> like i mean and my god so yeah my number five or four excuse me i walk alone batista dylan what's your number four okay so my number four is i'm making sure i have my list in order okay my number four might be a hot take. There might be some guys, might be some wrestler themes on this list that you're expecting to make the top five over this one. But I'll tell you what, you're no. wrong. Because next up, we got the world's strongest man, Mark Henry. Yeah. The 3 6 Mafia. Three, six, my with somebody's God. going to hit. Hey. Bro, also, at a time, 36 Mafia was so fucking huge when they made this song for Mark Henry. Yeah. Like, I mean, and then, like, great. Yeah, let that come in, bro. Slept on. It's definitely slept on. Because, I mean, if it's Mark Henry perfectly. Oh my god, bro. Somebody gon' get their ass kicked. Somebody gon' get their weed split. Somebody gon' get their ass kicked. Somebody's gon' get it. Break his neck. I mean, come on. Break his neck. What a thing. Break his neck. Yeah, dude. Wow, what a what a theme. Um, the three six mafia. 
<laughs> um, I'm actually seeing Three Six Mafia this summer in Tennessee, in their home state, which is going to be fucking sick. Yeah. Rest in peace, Gangsta Boo. Um, and yeah, dude, just like at a time, like I said, Three Six Mafia was like so fucking huge at the time. Also, that they made like some of the biggest rap, like arguably one of the biggest rap, uh, rap like rap artists in the world. Uh, Three Six Mafia at the time. And it's and also just like during a during a time where like like WWE would get like bands or artists to make songs, but like they would rarely get like super popular people to yeah. do like their theme yeah. songs. So the fact that they did that for the world's strongest man, Mark Henry, I mean, yeah. my goodness, that's a sleeper. I think that's a great pick, and I'm not yeah. mad at it at all because I think my number three. Maybe a bit of a hot take. But this is a hill that I am willing to die on. The third best theme song of all time. Gotta give it to my Come on, give it to me. I don't care. Just close your eyes is the third greatest theme song of all time. That is a hill I am willing to die on. Shout out to our friend Joe. Yeah. Joe Farr, big Christian, big Christian fan. Um, he'd be very happy to see you're on that list. He'd probably be pretty disappointed that unfortunately it's not on my top five. Um oh, I should have given it an I, I I should have given it an honorable mention, to be honest. What a great song. Yeah. I mean, and Christian is amazing. Yeah. Shout out to Christian. Um, yeah, dude. Um, shout out to hopefully, hopefully, we get that Edge versus Christian double retirement match. Um, WrestleMania 40. Give it to me. Please. So, what? We're on your third, I believe? Uh, yes, we are on my third. Um, and so for for me. Wait, I gotta make sure I have my top three in order. Yeah, Sorry. you don't want to mess this up. This is some okay. serious stuff. All right. For me, the number three greatest theme song of all time. Um, it's it's indistinguishable. Um, it fits only one person. Uh, I really could not see a, any other person ever using this theme song. Um, because it was made for this man, uh, similar to the last one, like I said, with three, six mafia, um, we got a big artist, um, with this theme song as well. And that is of course, dun, dun, time to play the game. Time to play the game. Yeah, we're going triple H time game by motorhead. I mean, come on. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
I'm still here, audio. I'm trying to figure out. Got a little technical difficulties at the worst possible moment. It's all good. I didn't let it go without a Triple H water spit into the air. Um, Water all over my screen. Not Not a smart decision for what I just did. There is, um... There's there's water on my screen, on my camera, on my desk. I just spit water it. into the air like Triple H. Well, wow. I mean, I hope it looked cool. I mean, my goodness, you can't say Come enough on. good things about it. I mean, <sighs> God, what a song! And I'll yeah. like this. I'm going to do everything in my power. I think this may be the song I come out to for my wedding. This may be it. It's either going to be this or Edge. But I think you might just have to do this. So, my number two. That was your number three? That was my number three. So, my number two theme song of all time and i think this is the perfect spot for it it is one of the most iconic theme songs one of the most well-known theme songs one that has stood the test of time it's none other than the rated r on this day Come on. I mean, come on. Metalingus, man. What a song. My goodness. Second greatest theme song of all time. No doubt in my mind about it. I mean, that song is so good that it might even be a hot take to have it at two and not one. Yeah. Um, because for me, I'll let it I'll let the cat out out of the bag. That's my number one. Um, is Edge, Metalingus. Uh, come on. You think you know me? Like, uh, uh, dude. It's so good. It's hearing so good. that at the Royal Rumble when he returned, yeah, is a moment I will truly never forget. I remember looking at Mark, just looking at each other, and we were like, "What?" We were just like, "Oh, we were like, no fucking way!" Like, oh my god. And like the best part is every time, like. The music hits. They kept it so secret, too. Like, they goes like that. 
Like, yeah, I mean, come on, you got to throw it up. Yeah, and, and kept, he did. He did keep yeah. it secret too, which is crazy. Like, like there was no leaks of it or anything. Like it, it really came out of nowhere. It was so awesome. Yeah, I mean, Jesus, it was tough. I was debating between one or two. I put it at two just because I think number one is maybe slightly better. But having it at number, uh, having it at number one, you got no arguments from me. You could flip flop. I think my one and two. What is uh? What's your number two? Yeah, so number two, um, there might be some recency bias here, but this is a hill I'm willing to die on. Um, no, I've never, there is not a single crowd that sings every single word of a person's theme song, except for, like, it doesn't happen. Like, they don't, like, it's it's starting to happen, but it's like, this man walked out without a theme song before. Can we talk about that? Versus MJF. They took away the man's entrance. Didn't even say his name yet. You all know, obviously. Yep. He took away his entrance, and he walked out, and the crowd did it for him. You gotta go. Chris Jericho. Judas by Fozzie. It's like, come on. I, I don't care. I'm willing to put it up there already. Perfect. Jesus Christ. I mean, it's yeah. unreal. It is unreal. Um, hell of a theme song. Um, yeah, man. Wow. Yeah. The entire me. crowd singing it is just like, I am bro, not... I never get tired of it. Whatever. Some people I hear on Twitter may be getting tired of it. I never fucking get tired of it. I'm not tired of it. Tell you that much. Yeah. I will literally, I could watch it all the time. Yeah, I mean, just gets me so pumped. Yeah, that's a great, great choice. Like as a wrestler, like, what more? Like, holy shit, what more could you want out of a theme song? Yeah, I mean, for like the crowd to sing every single word of it, to yeah. where you can walk out there without a theme song and they sing it for you. It's insane. It's pretty special. Um, I'd say I'll probably put in my honorable mention. Um, but. I didn't want to include it in the top five just because I, I had to, to, man. I didn't want to go too bold. So, I mean, I'm not mad at it. One of us had to do it, and it was you, and I'm proud of you for doing it. So, your number one was Edge. My number one was Triple H, the game. Mm. Um, I just think you could flip-flop Edge or Triple H. I think those, yeah. in my opinion, those are easily one and two. Um and I think they are just both so iconic. Yeah, I mean, and they go so well with the specific superstar or the the specific wrestler or uh, like WWE superstar that it represents. Like it's, um, they just fit so well. They're both so perfect uh, for for the character, for the person. Um, 
for the style of wrestling they represent. It's um, yep. it's really just well all time. Yeah. So let us know in the comments. What do you think about our list of the top five theme songs of all time? Do you think we missed anybody? Do you think these are hot takes? Let us know in the comments. And now, Night of Champions is upon us. We are a mere two and a half weeks away. So let's go over some early match card predictions because there is only two matches officially confirmed. And Night of Champions, in case you don't know, is a pay-per-view slash premium live event where every title in WWE will be put on the line. Dylan, why don't you kick us off with your first match card prediction? Um, Yeah, so my first match card prediction, bro, this match card was hard for me, honestly. It was pretty tricky. For some, for some of the certain matches. Um. So I'll so go the, over I'll go over the confirmed two really quick. Yeah. So yeah, do that. Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar is confirmed for the show. Uh it's just a singles match, but I think there's a good chance they could add a stipulation to it. I think maybe a steel cage, maybe like a last man standing or or no DQ. Um, and then obviously we will be crowning the new world heavyweight champion. Seth Rollins is already in the match. Um, and he's going to face the winner of the SmackDown tournament, which already happened by the time this is out. So we don't know, but I'm going to bet it's probably edge. Um, so yeah, those are your two confirmed matches thus far. Mm. What? Nothing. I'm just thinking you said it's probably edge. I think so. I think it's, as much as I like hate to say it, I feel like it could be theory as well, but I think they're going to do edge. Um, what do got you, you? I got a, I think they're going to do AJ. Yeah. I mean, that would be a sick match. Yeah. Um, I think edge would be just like, I think edge would also be awesome. Wouldn't be disappointed at all with edge, but I, th I think AJ is going to win. But that also goes into my match card, like predictions moving forward. So, yeah, I also had to uh, adjust some things as well based off of who's going to win that. But um, I'll kick us off with the women's tag team championship, which I think it's going to be Ronda and Shayna versus Liv and Raquel, just because obviously we're going to get Chelsea Green and Sonia uh, next week. Well, this week uh, for the tag titles. So I don't think they're going to do that. I think that it's probably going to be Ronda and Shayna at Night of Champions. And I think they're probably going to win. You know, they like mm -hmm. to have featured these big um, legendary superstars in the Saudi Arabia shows. And um, Ronda Rousey fits that. So I think they're going to want to feature Ronda on the uh, on the card. And what better way than to have her and Shayna uh, win the women's tag titles? Mm -hmm. no i agree completely um i think i think um yeah i think that's a great uh great man like i have that match i don't know why i stumbled over my words here my thoughts but i also have that match on my prediction card uh live and recover shana and ronda sweet um, yeah i'm excited for it yeah yeah totally and um i think putting the belts on shana and ronda is a good move yeah i mean I think it's right now it feels like the only way to have give the belts any sort of meaning. It feels like they're the team that are going to do it. So um and I think they're a great tag team and I think they are would be a lot of fun as a tag team and given a proper tag title run um I think they would work well together. So who do you have for the United States Championship? Um so for me, I have Seth versus AJ as the world title final. And then for the U.S. title, I actually have Theory versus Edge. Oh, um, interesting. Yeah, I think it would be a fun matchup. Uh, we got it once, uh, just like a one-off on Raw kind of. Uh, but I think a proper proper little feud between the two would be fun. That's, um, um, yeah, I mean, that's who I had um, – in my article, I said if Edge doesn't win the triple threat, then I think he's gonna go after the US title. But mm, nice. I just think he's going to um gonna win. So for my person, this was tricky for me. Mm -hmm. Um because I think they have a few good options. 
but I think we could be getting Cameron Grimes versus mm. um, Austin Theory for the U.S. title. I was thinking maybe L.A. Knight, maybe yeah. Grayson Waller. L.A. Um, Knight's another option I think is possible. Yeah, I just think they have bigger plans for L.A. Knight. And I don't think Theory's going to drop the title. So I think that L.A. Knight's going to win Money in the Bank. And I think him losing to Austin Theory at Night of Champions would not help that in the gotcha. slightest bit. So I think mm -hmm. and they're pretty high on Cameron Grimes per the reports that are going around. So I think what better way than to. No, I, I mean, I like Cameron, Gr Cameron Grimes as well. Yeah, I mean, he's great. So um I've got Cameron Grimes versus Austin Theory. Dylan has Edge versus uh, Austin Theory for the U.S. title. Who do you have for the Intercontinental Championship? Uh, yeah, this one was tough for me as well. Um, I landed on um, Gunther versus Riddle for the for okay. the Intercontinental Championship. Uh, I got Gunther v. Riddle. Um, it looks like Riddle and the Usos, uh, Riddle and KO and Sammy are like done. Um, with the bloodline for now, at least, um, KO and Sammy, uh, were just kind of boys with Riddle. KO and Sammy had a little run in with Imperium. Um, you would think that KO and Sammy are not going to be on this show, uh, because they don't wrestle this show ever. Um, so yeah, that's my my thought is that, uh, that that's kind of a good transition. Um, to give Gunther a little bit of a win, uh, like give him a solid win, solid match. It's like a match you can trust that's going to, you know, that's going to has the potential to be a very like good match. Um, and I think it's a viable option to like give Gunther a win. That's not like a just a stupid like squash little win. Yeah, I mean, I'm not mad at it. Riddle's definitely one of the people that I considered. Um, for the Intercontinental Championship. But for mine, this, like you said, this was tough because it feels like in this very moment, we don't have a lot of like challengers for the Intercontinental title um, on Raw, but Guthrie's going to return tonight on Monday Night Raw. So I think we'll probably get more of a sense who he's going to face. Possibly Drew. That's who I had. Gotcha. Um, so I had Drew, and I know there's a lot of reports and speculations going around about uh, Drew's status in the WWE. He's unhappy. He wants more money. Um, I don't know how much I believe that. So I think that... I just can't see him leaving. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Exactly. I can't see I... him leaving and doing better anywhere and getting yeah. booked that much better somewhere else. Like, And that's the thing, because like... Where is he going to go? AEW? And then what? Like they book big guys like him horrible there. I know. Look at what they've done with Wardlow and Powerhouse Hobbs and Luchasaurus. Yeah. Like, he's not, he will not thrive there. Like, as much as it would be, like, fun to see him in a different company, he's not going to thrive in AEW. Now, there's a lot of other things that AEW can provide him if he wants to wrestle in other companies, but he's not going to get booked properly in AEW. And I, agree. I just don't think he's been getting booked poorly enough to where he would be unhappy. So that's why, like, I don't yeah. know how much I trust the reports. And he like, just, that's what like, I'm talking about. He had a match of the year. Like, he just had the match of the year. Yeah. Um, at WrestleMania. Exactly. So I think and they that... gave him a month off after it because I don't know. I don't I just don't see him leaving. But who knows? Yeah. Yeah. For me, it's the same thing. He just seems like a WWE guy until he retires. So that's why I got Gunther versus Drew. Plus, they never met one on one ever. Mm -hmm. Ooh, so, that's very um, interesting. I think that that's a good opportunity to do it. And I think that it would be an absolute banger of a match. So totally. Um, yeah. Dylan's got Matt Riddle versus Gunther. I've got Drew versus Gunther for the IC title. Next up, Dylan. The SmackDown Women's Championship that is on Raw. Rhea Ripley, who's she facing? Uh, I got Natalia. I think you probably Agreed. have the same. Yep. Yeah. It feels like that's the direction we're going. We talked about it last week. Um, I'm fine with it. I think that her game The other thing to consider is like they only have like two weeks to book this show now. Yeah. That's the other thing. Exactly. So it's like you need to kind of fall back on some reliable stuff yeah so um, i think natalia is a great choice for that just giving her a win over a veteran like that to like really start 
like help her title run that she just started. Yeah, totally. Um, I, I'd like to. I'm curious to see who you think Bianca is going to face. Um, <clears throat> so this one's tough because we haven't gotten anything yet for like what Bianca's going to do. Um, following what happened at Backlash, however, I couldn't think of anybody really. I think that potentially Dakota Kai, but I think it's going to be EO versus Bianca in a rematch. Yeah, I think so too. That that's where I went, especially after um after backlash and like how how um over creo uh yeah how over eo was with that crowd um, yeah and oh my and it was an awesome match yeah i mean it was <laughs> incredible um, yeah i just think it could get dangerous if they do eo versus bianca and everyone just starts rooting for eo um, no totally i got of champions so but who knows we haven't had smackdown yet so maybe bianca just is now a heel um who knows maybe she just came out on smackdown and cut a heel promo but i want dakota versus bianca at money in the bank that'd be fun that'd um, be fun a lot of fun. i think if everyone's going after bianca or has gone after bianca let's not leave dakota kai out because yeah she is also very good at wrestling so um do you have do you think Roman's going to be defending his title? Um so I thought about it hard and I've come to the conclusion that I think he's just going to do like a 1000 day coronation type celebration. I think possibly uh reveal like a new championship belt um some sort of thing that maybe it gets fucked up by Cody, who knows? Like maybe Brock Cody is earlier in the night. That's the main event, and like the Roman Reigns thing is the main event, and Cody comes out, or it, it gets interrupted somehow, or or it gets fucked up by like they all turn on Jay or something. You know what I mean? Like they all like on um, the Thousand Day Coronation or something, they all turn on Jay or something like that. So I think it's interesting, uh, but yeah, that I don't think he's gonna wrestle. I think that's yeah, what's going to happen. I um I completely agree. I think I didn't really think about it until uh, I was on like Twitter and stuff and people were like who's Drew, or who's Roman going to face? And I was just yeah. like I don't know. To me it just feels very obvious that they're going to do the thousand day celebration because it mm -hmm. will be his thousandth day. Like Yeah. Night Have we confirm that? It is confirmed. I looked it up. Okay. Um, that's what I thought. I thought it was exactly a thousand but yeah, May 27th will be his 1,000th day on the dot, which is insane. So I don't think they're just not going to, like, have a celebration for that. And I think they are going to debut a new title. So, yeah. What do you um, think? Do you think they're going to do a completely new design? Or do you think they could do, like, a, a winged eagle 2.0? Like, what? I think it's going to be similar to what it is now. But not exactly what you know what I mean. I think it's going to be in my head. I don't, and maybe I'm just like being optimistic. I think it's going to be a better looking version of what the title is now. That's my hope. I think Triple H is going to take like what the WWE title looks like now, and I don't think he's going to change it that much. I think they're going to be like. Let's make this look less like a toy. Like, let's take this title that we already have and make it not look like a toy anymore. So my thing is just like, I don't know how they would even begin to do that because it's literally just a giant WWE logo. So like, I don't no, know. I, know. How I don't know. They it's would not my like... job. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm just, I just think they are probably going to do like a complete redesign. Like Triple H knows Dude, that. Dude, and also... If that is what happens, I'm I'm totally not against that at all. I'm not saying, by the way, yeah, people listening, I'm not saying I want a like updated version of the current title. I'm just going based off history. <clears throat> there's a good chance that that's what we might get. Um, it, luckily, we got the new world heavyweight title, so hopefully that can be like a little bit of proof of they're willing to uh, go against what they've been doing for the past like ten years. I just but don't... the ten years prior to this world heavyweight title, 
every title has looked like the other titles. So, yeah. So, I am also worried that this title is going to look better than the other one. Not like better, but like more prestigious. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, so I think, and this is what scares me. I think there is a chance. I don't know what the chance, how high it is, but I think there is a decent chance that it is the same exact title, but just like a gold strap and like just more gold on it. If that makes possibly. sense. Possibly. Like the Snoop Dogg title. Yeah, it's very possible. Um, which would suck because I want a new design. I don't want a giant yeah. WWE logo as a title. And But I think Triple H is smart enough. I don't think he would redesign or make a new title um, like the world heavyweight title and then just not completely redesign. Well, yeah. And that's the other thing now is like now you have the world heavyweight title and then you have Roman's championships and the two women's championships look the same and the world heavyweight doesn't. So you would hope and the fact that the SmackDown and Raw women's championships are on different brands. We keep bringing it up. Hopefully this is all leading to new titles like yeah. in every way. Um, and it feels if, like now's the time to do it. Yeah, like, it feels like if they're going to do is it, this is definitely champions. Exactly. Well, and it also feels like if they were ever going to do it, that like now's the time they're going to do it. If they're not going to do it now, then they're not doing it anytime soon. That's yeah. my guess. Yeah. So also just like having them make a new title is just going to fix um their like problem with the WWE and Universal title. Plus, like they're not going to run three world titles so i think that's absolutely what they're gonna do because that's like it's the thing that makes the most sense um i know yeah. we talked about it last year when theory won money in the bank but like i don't think they're gonna wait to the winner of money in the bank to cash in on roman um so i think they are definitely going to present a new title yeah i was also gonna say um for this i think we're also gonna get becky versus trish on this match card oh yeah Agreed. Um, um, which should be fun, and I think it would yeah. be the most women's matches that have been on a Saudi show so far. Um, if we end Probably. up with four women's matches, so yeah, I mean, who knows? It's going to be interesting to see. It sucks that it's going to be air at a weird time. Um, for uh, yeah, for us, but you know, it is what it is. We'll have to catch it on the. Uh, Oh, in the replay, but that's going to wrap up the podcast. And I got to say, it was a blast to. Um, yeah, very fun episode on some theme songs. Um, and guess what? We live stream now. So every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, we live stream at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We talk about the wrestling shows that are on those respected nights and you can listen to the burning hammer podcast on apple spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to follow us on twitter at the burnt hammer you can follow us on instagram tiktok facebook and youtube at the burning hammer if you're watching on youtube like comment and subscribe and make sure to check out vendetta sports media me and dylan both write for them you can follow them on Twitter at Vendetta VSM. You can follow them on Instagram and TikTok at Vendetta Sports Media. And make sure to check out VendettaSportsMedia.com for all of your sports needs, plus TV, movies, and gaming. You name it, they are going to cover it. Head over to VendettaSportsMedia.com. That's going to wrap it up. I'm Mark Izzo. He is Dylan O'Brien. And this has been another episode of the Burning Hammer Podcast. We'll catch you next Monday. 